Go ahead, Jay. <clears throat> Go ahead, Jay. Harry, um, first of all, congratulations on the preseason All America. Um, what do you, what do you, you as sort of the center of attention on all of this, and then with everything that you know come down in terms of rankings and stuff like that, how are you able to stay grounded? What do you have to do as sort of the person who's in the middle of this to keep everybody focused on you know the job at hand? Thank you. Um... I think that we don't worry about like ranking, like the numbers. We don't worry about like the accolades we get. Like, yeah, it's a good thing to like have, but we just got to work on ourselves and getting better because at the end, if you look around the country, everybody has the same common goal, which is winning a national championship. So it's like, it's all for grabs. So we just have to just focus on ourselves and just get better and stay in the moment. Go ahead, PJ. Great, thanks. Hi. Um... Ari, this is for you. Um, you know, I know that you've done a lot over the off season to change um, and to improve on what you already do and to be um, even better of an all around player, right? Is there one little adjustment that you've made that you've seen like this significant impact from? From myself or from my teammates? Uh, let's do both. Yeah, so the little adjustment I would say for me is just uh, just slowing down, knowing when to change pace and just reading the floor, just observing everything. And just for my teammates, um, their competitiveness and intensity every day. I think that's the little adjustment. And that's everything that we're doing. It's like making us better. How has it helped to have Shana practicing with her? I know you guys are very competitive. It's been good. Uh, we push each other. Uh, it's like I play a lot of, against a lot of fast people, but like Shana is kind of like similar to me. So, I mean, she helps me and I help her. So it's like we're both pushing each other and we're both competitive people. So it gets chippy, but it's fun. And at the end of the day, we make each other better. Go ahead again, PJ. This one's for Darren. Um, so. First of all, I guess we, we haven't talked about this, but what really made you want to come to Arizona? What was the big draw for you? It was a deal for me. Like I trusted her. She trusted me. Like she played like similar to European style and she always recruits uh, European players. That's why uh, I chose Arizona. Can I have a follow-up? Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I know that you um, have, I've heard that you have a, you know, you played or you have a relationship with Kelsey Plum and was just wondering what, um, you know, what that's like and if she has had any, what type of influence she's had on you. I like I met her twice in Istanbul back in Turkey and she really helped me to uh, like chose Arizona because we were talking about you know the colleges and when when I say University of Arizona she like immediately said you should go to Adia like that's what she had to do then I just chose Arizona yeah Go ahead, Jason. Good morning, Ari. Uh, congratulations on being named a preseason All-American. What is the chemistry like with you and Shayna on the same team on the court at the same time? Have you been able to develop that yet? Is it good? Will that take a little time? Certainly you've maybe practiced against her, but what about the two of you together on the court at the same time? Yeah, we just were on the same team yesterday at practice and we like kind of compliment each other. I can like with Shayna, like having her now, I'm able to go to the two more and play off the ball. And she's able, she's the type of player, she's able to create for herself and create for others. And so we kind of have that dynamic going on right now. Like we just really getting a feel for each other, although we don't like play on the same team, but once we're placed on the same team, like we work good together. And again, what does it mean to you to be a preseason All-American? Congrats on that. Thank you. Uh, it means a lot. Like. It's a humbling honor. I'm blessed to be named an All-American and it's just, I'm gonna just continue to do my thing. Uh, this will go out the window probably tomorrow at practice, but yeah, I just gotta keep getting better. 
Do you feel like this lineup is stacked with talent? It is, yes. A lot of two-way players on the, the lineup, and I'm just excited to be, like, amongst those group, good group of women. Go ahead, Alec. Yeah, I have one for, for each of you. I'll start with, with Ari. Uh, the last couple of years, Arizona women's basketball has kind of been an under-the-radar type of team, if you will. Maybe not inside your building, but, you know, outside-wise, it took a while for you guys to build up the, the recognition. And now you're ranked number seven in the AP pool, and you're not really sneaking up on anybody. I'm curious uh, just how much – if the message has changed in the locker room, knowing that you guys really aren't the underdogs anymore, you're – you're looked at as a real contender in college or women's hoops now. Yeah, the message hasn't changed for us. Like we still feel like we're the underdogs and our message every day just to keep getting better and just know that we have a target on our back like we always had. And so it's like, we just got to keep making, getting each other, like keep making each other better and just, just worry about ourselves in the moment. Do you like the fact, I mean, I know you said you, you view yourself as underdogs now, but do you like the fact that this women's team is finally getting the recognition that, um, you guys have, have been, you know, the work that you've been putting in is now getting a lot of more recognition. I love it. It's about time. Uh, it just speaks testaments, like our volume to Coach Barnes, the players she recruiting, along with the other coaches on our staff. So, I mean, they're doing a great job of building this program up, and I'm just looking forward to continue with the years to come. And then for Darren, uh, who who have been some, some teammates that uh, have helped you uh, adjust to, to life at Arizona and that you've become friends with? So everybody was so helpful to me and like it really helped me to adjust more quickly but um, Ari, Trinity, Sam, Kate really helped me like more to adjust to the team and to Tucson everything. Thank you. Go ahead, Rich. Um, hi, guys. Thank you so much. I want to follow up, Ari, with something that Alec just talked about uh, of the team now getting the national recognition that you guys knew uh, internally, how special it could be. Was there a moment where it all kind of started to come together and you thought everything that Adia had been talking about is going to come true, a moment where it just kind of snapped to you that this is something special that we have here? I will say... Sometime last year, like when I seen my team just playing together and playing for each other and just competing against the other top teams in the conference, I was like, okay, I'm starting to believe what the deal was saying, you know, when I first committed here. And it's just, hey, we, I, I trust her uh, and she trusts me as well. So it's like, hey, it all came true. Um, also, I had another follow-up for you. Talk about some of the newcomers um, and what they bring and, and how they've meshed into this culture uh, that is that is growing um, and getting better. Yeah, it's just we're looking scary this year. It's just with the newcomers, they added the pieces that we needed over the past couple of years to like be like an Oregon or Oregon State or a Stanford. Like, so I feel like we're more complete this year. But like Trinity, she adds that experience, she adds that toughness, and she's a heck of a rebounder. So, and that's something we've been lagging for the past couple of years. So she adds that. And Darren, she's a tough player, plays beyond her year, especially as a freshman. She's a lefty and she's not scared of anything. And I love that. Shayna, she brings, she's a, cause she's competitive as well. She's a tough guard and she can create for herself and herself and others. And she can also play on a defensive end. And Bindu is very athletic, very. And she does all the hustle plays. She's not scared to get her hands dirty. So I love that. And Marta adds another post, give us more depth. And so I'm just really happy at how we're looking right now. One last thing for Ari. I was talking with the baseball coach yesterday. He was talking about the baseball team is very grateful that they're finally able to get back out there and play after everything they've been through, cancellation of their season, COVID being, being uh, isolated for this basketball team. How do you guys feel now that you're able to get back on the court and you have an opportunity to compete after everything you've been through in the last 10 months? Yeah, just like the baseball coach said, like, we're grateful. And it just, I don't know, the lesson we learned is not to take anything for granted. Like, we miss being out on the court with each other. It's just like every day we're going out there, we're giving our all. So we just learned we have to be grateful and just to get better and make each other better every day. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Go ahead, Kim. Darren, what's it like coming so far from home during the pandemic and how much were you able to prepare over the summer? What was going on in Turkey? Uh, so it was a really hard time for me um, back in Turkey because we always had to lo lock down for, for my age under 18. So I couldn't like run at all or do like play basketball. So I just had to do my own workouts and try to stay fit and stay in the shape. And in the summer, I just worked one-on-one um, -on -one with private coaches and trainer uh, conditioners. And I think like I did a pretty good job in quarantine. It, it was hard, but I, I just try to manage to, you know, uh, use that time in a good way. And um, Ari, you guys are kind of jumping right into Pac-12 this year because of the way the, the coaches decided to do the 22 game schedule. Um, what's that like thinking there's going to be no preparation before this tough conference? It's going to be tough. And just thinking about 22 games, like it's going to be turnaround. It's going to be a grind. And I just know it's going to be a battle. So you got to bring your A game. And it's just like, like you said, with like little preparation, it's just like, I'm going to have to go off of what happened last year. I'm going to have to do extra research on players that just came in. So, I mean, just got to find more ways to be prepared and just we got to execute the game plan that's given to us. PJ, go ahead. So this first one's for Darren. Um, yeah, Coach Adia has talked about everyone has um, followed this, this new thing about improving 1% every day. Even she has. And what is your 1%? My 1% is uh, I just to play like myself and try to get better in defense. Okay, great. And for Ari, you know, the team's gonna look different this year with um, all the newcomers, obviously, and with Shane on the court. What is that gonna look like? I know you've only played together, you said like yesterday and very few times in practice so far, but, you know, for the, really, she's going to be creating for you. And you're usually the creator for yourself and for others. How do you think that's going to really, what that's going to look like and how it's going to change how you play? Yeah, with the addition of Shana and just playing with her, it's going to help me a lot. And it's going to actually make my stats like more efficient. So instead of me having to play defense and create for my teammates, I'm going to have like more wins. So, I mean, Shana's going to help me a lot. And I'm going to also help her make her percentage go up as well. So, I mean, I'm just happy to have her. Go ahead, Ryan. Ari, I just want to know what you think about playing with no fans this year. I know you guys have worked so hard to get people into the building the last few years. It's going to be tough. Uh, we love our fans. They like motivate us and they like, they make it a hostile environment for our opponents to play. And it's just, it's going to be tough. But I mean, we got to find a way to motivate ourselves and just to be loud. So we're going to have to find a way, but it's definitely going to be tough. And then I have one more question. Um, what, what would, what's the biggest difference between Trinity and Dominique? Like what, what notice, what differences do you notice when the, maybe in the starting lineup this year? Ooh both phenomenal players but the difference is um I would say that Trinity is more physical than Dominique uh Dom was a more finesse player um but they both have great outside shots but they're kind of they're kind of similar in a way but it's just I would have to say Trinity is more aggressive but she's definitely going to be a key piece this year all right go ahead Rich this is for Darren, a couple of non-basketball questions, if you don't mind. What's the biggest difference between back home in your homeland and the United States? Um, what I noticed is um, the high intensity in the practices, like, and people always are real, like, to each other. They always, like, talk real to us to get better. But maybe it's a cultural difference. I don't know. Maybe it's the 
difference in, in this team, but like the most uh, different thing is the high intensity of the practices. Food-wise, being, being around Tucson, being here in the United States, um, what's the difference in the food from back home and, and what have you tried here and what have you decided you like? Um, so there's a lot of difference about food in, in here. So it's, there's always fast food to eat. So that's, that's dangerous for me because I like to eat so much. But I like like honey, barbecue chicken wing a lot the barbecue yeah. stuff and yeah <laughs> i love it a lot <laughs> but it is dangerous in america the fast foods like i gotta be careful about that in turkey it's like more mediterranean like salad or like more like healthier so yeah have you tried any mexican food does anybody take I love mexican, mexican? I love Chipotle so much. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Well, that's it for these two. Um, Darren, Chipotle is not real Mexican food, so someone's going to take you to a better spot. Um, <laughs> but thank you, you two. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys later. All right. We're going to have Tara and Sam coming up here in a minute, just waiting for Sam to join. We can probably start with Tara right now, though. All right. Hey, Tara. Hello. All right. So, Tara, I'm just going to ask you, whenever you're not talking, to have it on mute? Yep. But um, we can start questions right now for Tara as Sam is on her way. Okay, cool. Go ahead, PJ. Hi, Tara. Um, so, you know, Coach Adidas talked about the 1% and you guys improving 1% every day. Uh, what's your 1%? Um, yeah, so my one more is getting up at least 200, it uh, doesn't have to be threes, but uh, threes or twos after each practice. And, and so far, it's probably been a couple weeks since you've done this, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we did it last season as well, but yeah. And, and what do you see so far? Do you see any um, good results? Are you getting stronger? Is your shot more efficient? Yeah, I think my uh, shot percentage is definitely higher than it was last year. So I think um, my one more is definitely helping me. Hey, Tara, can you tilt your camera or your computer screen down a little bit? Yes. Just like that, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, Tara, thanks for joining us. Um, what's life been like for you over the last 10 months uh, being from, from uh, Australia COVID, uh, being away from family, friends, uh, what's this been like for you? Um, I think it's definitely been different, especially compared to last season. Um, but I think it's been almost not good, but I think it's given me a lot more time on my hands. Um, Cause I guess like we're home more a lot compared to last season. So I guess I get more time to do schoolwork and just like work on myself in general, but it's been good so far, yeah. What's the biggest difference, do you think? How much have you grown in the last year from being a freshman now, uh, um, a little bit more mature uh, with more experience? Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm just, I think I'm better at focusing um, on the detail of things. Um, obviously last year, especially like when you're a freshman, you make a lot of mistakes, but I think this year um, I, don't make as, I don't make as much mistakes. And I think I'm just, um, growing as a as a person i think my iq is getting better but yeah great thank you very much mm -hmm. go ahead ryan and sam is here by the way for everybody yeah uh sam and tar you guys the ncaa women's basketball account called you guys the TikTok queens um <laughs> how did you guys get started with that like when, when did you decide that that was something you guys wanted to do um we had a i guess we've been doing TikToks ever since last season uh, with Dominique, we had a TikTok account. It's called the Hafrikans. 
Um, but I, we just like doing it. It's fun. So we just, you know, do it with each other. But yeah. Sam, what, what do you like about doing TikToks? Um, they're just like a little fun thing to do, like on the side there. Um, if you're a good dancer like Tara, like it's a lot easier, but when you're someone like me who's not the best dancer, um, it's just like a fun way to like goof off. And it's always like a bonding experience if we're all hanging out. It's like, we need something to do. You can always just make TikToks. <laughs> how long does it take to, like we see the, the, the final product, but how many takes does it take to, to get to that? Um, last year, it probably took us like hours, like an hour, hour and a half, but now we're a little bit like less serious about it. So it probably takes like 15 minutes. And, and what, do you, like you said, it's, you like to have fun, but is it, do you have other goals when you're doing TikToks? I mean, are you trying to create a brand for yourself or the program? I mean, how, what's the, what's your goal with it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think on like our personal accounts, we're definitely just like trying to have fun, like finding like the fun trends, like doing whatever the trends are on TikTok. But then obviously when it's like the ones that get posted on TikTok Thursday, it's more to try and like show off like our personalities a little bit. And and what's been your favorite one that you've ever done so far? Ooh, um, I think the most proudest one that I've done was one that me and Tara recently did. I don't know if it's been put out yet, but it was a long dance and I'm not much of a dancer. So the fact that I can remember it all and stay on beat, I think that one was my favorite. And what makes Tara such a good partner for TikToks? Um, she's a great dancer and she always hypes me up even though I'm not the best dancer and I sometimes forget the dances. She's always right there with me, hyping me up. When, when did you guys uh, like first start this? Was it, was it last year? Yeah, um, Dominique actually started it because she like got into TikTok first. And then um, I don't even know how like me and Tara got joined into it or I should say dragged into it. But once we started like doing the first one, it was just really fun. So then we started doing them like all the time. Have you gotten, what kind of feedback have you gotten from maybe people, other people that you know around the country or, or just people in the sport in general? Mm, yeah, I know a lot of other Arizona athletes do TikTok. So we all just like look at each other's TikToks and we're like, oh, like that one was funny. Like that one was a good idea. But then like all of our fans, like the little kids, they love it. Like they always comment or DM us and they're like, we love your TikToks. Like your TikToks are our favorite. So I think it's just a great way to relate to like the younger fans for us. Jay, go ahead, Jay. Hey, Sam. Uh, so I, I asked uh, um, Ari the same thing. Uh, you, you guys are getting a lot of attention, you know, ranked top 10, um, all American lists. Uh, you, you know, you're getting a lot of attention. How do you guys uh, stay grounded with all this? Keep your eye, you know, keep your eye on, you know, on the goal and what kind of an, a, you know, as a senior, what kind of additional leadership role do you think you have to take in all of that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the most way that we stay grounded is just taking it day by day. Um, every day after practice, we rank practice of how it was based on like a tournament run. So say, oh, like we would have lost first round or we would have went to the final four, like kind of stuff like that. And obviously the goal is always like, it was a practice like we won the national championship. And obviously it's not gonna happen every day and it's not gonna be often that it happens. But I think just kind of keeping it like that, just focusing on it day by day, focusing on the little things and not so much about the rankings. I think that's what helps us stay grounded. But then as a leader, I think like as a senior, just knowing that like it can all be like taken away within like a day or a game. So just knowing that we have to give everything, every practice and just know that like nothing is guaranteed. If we're playing a non-ranked team, it's not a guarantee win for us. We still have to treat them like they're the number one team in the country. Go ahead, PJ. Hi, Sam. Um, for, I have two questions. First of all, you know, you're the one who's known for your consistency and having a great all around game. You stuff the stat sheet all the time and even the deflections, which aren't in the stat sheet, but should be. Um, for someone like you, how have you improved your game this year? Um, I think I've just gotten more confident as a leader on the court and off the court. I know now that I'm a senior, like there's, a, I'm like the oldest that you can get now. There's like a bunch of people under me. So kind of just like steering them in the right direction. We're like, we do need players who are consistent, like, like helping everyone know their role. We don't need everyone on the team to score 40 points a game. We don't need everybody on the team to grab 20 rebounds. It would be nice, but that's just not possible. And it's not a goal that we need to attain. So just kind of like helping everyone like know where their role is, like keeping them like 
grounded like I was talking about earlier so I just think that like as myself I've kind of grown in that area but then also just I mean I don't want to say being more consistent because that's kind of like what I've been known for but kind of like in my shots like just being more consistent being more confident taking the shots that I need to to help the team I know Ari always tells me to shoot the ball so I've just been trying to like work on like shooting it and being a more consistent shooter great and um can we have an appearance from your dog you know we whenever we talk I have to see your dog, so. Uh, oh, yep, she is here with She's me. She's around? Yep, there she is sleeping on the bed. Taking a nap. <laughs> yep, that's all she does when I'm home. <laughs> that's great, thanks. Of course. Go ahead, Kim. Sam, speaking about being a senior, um, what was your reaction when this became kind of a free year? You could come back if you wanted to. Did you put any thought into it? You can put that off till later. How's that been for you? Um, yeah, it was definitely nice to um, hear the news that the NCAA was giving everyone back a year. I know they did it for obviously the sports who didn't play and they did it for football. So it's just kind of like waiting to see like, are they going to give it to us? Cause like we kind of missed the season, but then we're also like, we also played the whole season and we're getting a season this year. So it was just nice to know that like, there is that option for me if like I do decide to come back. But obviously right now I'm just trying to focus on the, this year. There's so many different things that could happen. We're playing a lot of Pac-12 games this year. So just kind of taking it day by day and just seeing how the year goes and then making my decision after the season. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, just for both of you, what, what do you guys think about the playing with no fans this year? I know Sam, specifically you, you came in when there weren't a lot of fans at your games. You've seen the attendance rise steadily. And then now to not have fans in your, what could be your last year. I mean, how do you feel about that? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a different experience. Um, I think one thing that I love playing about games is having all of our fans there cheering us on whenever we're there, the other teams on like a 20 L run, like the fans really help us like get back into the game and stuff like that. So it's definitely going to be hard, but I also think it's going to be a great team bonding or team building experience for us. Just knowing that we're all we have, our coaches and our team is all we have. So it's like we can either build each other up or it can be like our downfall. So I think just focusing on that is going to be the most important thing. And then also just knowing that like, like it's going to be like different, like we're not going to be able to like walk in and like see everyone. Obviously, like, I don't know if like our friends and family can come yet, but it's just going to be a whole new experience. So it should be interesting. And, and uh, Ari mentioned having to create your own energy. Do you guys have any like plans for doing that? Um, I mean, we always like to like goof around. We don't like the traditional like clapping and like just yelling. Like we do do that obviously on the court, but I think in a weird way, one thing that really hypes us up before every game, um, we just do animal noises. Um, everyone just like pretends they're an animal and they just start making that noise. And then we'll have some people clapping and stomping, just trying to get on beat. So that's, we do that before every game. We did that last year as kind of a tradition that started then. So I think just like doing that and finding little things to like keep it like fun, but at the same time, like getting everyone loud and encouraging each other. Go ahead, Alec. Yeah. This can uh, be for either of you guys, whichever one of you wants to take it. Uh, I was talking to Ari in the last session and talking about the recognition that you guys have gotten and this program not really being an underdog team anymore, but Ari still feels that you guys have that underdog mentality. Do you guys feel the same way that you're still underdogs? <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I think we'll always kind of be underdogs in a way just because our program isn't someone like UConn where we've won five national championships in a row or like we get every number one recruited player in the country every single year. So I think in that sense, like we're still going to be the underdogs. And I know like some, like some people respect us, some people don't, like some people have their own opinions about us. So I think just knowing that um, we can still have the underdog mentality, I think you kind of have to in this sense, just because every game, everyone wants to beat you. There's always a target on your back unless you're, for like maybe like two games for us where like we're not ranked ahead of a team. So there's always going to be a target on our back. So I think having that mentality of like we're the underdogs, like we need to prove ourselves and show ourselves will definitely like help us in the future and in some games. Jason and PJ are the last one. So go ahead, Jason. Yeah, I got to follow up on that. Um, which animal are you? And then the second question would be when you take a look at this lineup, what do you think of all of the talent that you see? Um, I am the cow. I always go for the moose. 
Um, but yeah, I think this year is really exciting. I mean, we're still trying to find like matchups and like who's going to start, who's going to be a six man. I think it's great because we have so many players this year. We have so many weapons where anyone can come in and help make a difference. It's not like this is our select starting five, like we're the best five. It's anyone can be interchangeable and mixed in and mixed out. And we have so many different weapons. We have a lot of point guards, a lot of shooting guards this year, like so many posts who are different. We have physical, versatile. So I think it's just going to be great this year to see everyone like kind of like mix and match in, their, in whichever five we put out on the floor. So I think it's going to be exciting for everyone to see. Thanks. Can't wait to follow you. And last one, go ahead, PJ. Yeah, um, you know, I know that you focus on what's in front of you, right? The next game, the game that you're playing, and then the next game. And you don't, you, you know, it, Coach D always talks about not getting too high and not getting too low. But for a program that you both came into to build, right? To, to put them on the map. And, and it's what you're doing. Was there a moment when on Monday or I guess it was Tuesday, the days get all wrapped up into one, but was there a moment when AP came out and said, you're number seven in the country that you went, wow, people finally get it. And they see us. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, for me personally, there wasn't necessarily that moment just because I think the moment was really last year when we were like up there and ranked. And then this year it was kind of like, expected not like oh like you guys have to be in the top 10 but it's like we know we're a top 25 team and it's going to be hard this year the pressure is going to be on and just obviously knowing like having that mindset where like it's just a preseason a people like no one's played any games yet you never know what's going to happen with covid injuries all that stuff so i think it's just like not focusing on it too much and just think like yes it's a great honor to be ranked seven but it's not the best honor in the world like so many other teams are like obviously ranked two we could be ranked somewhere else the next day so like it was nice like we said like congratulations like we were like good job guys like our hard work has paid off but it's like it's not the end goal like this is not it wasn't our goal like we want to be ranked seven like it's just like we have to keep taking it day by day all right sam and tara thank you guys so much um that's it for you guys so i appreciate your time thank you thank you thanks all right we got trinity baptiste coming in here it's just going to be her for this 15 minutes. Hey, Trinity. Hey, Trinity, would you mind uh, putting your phone horizontally? Perfect. Is that okay? That looks good. All right, guys. So we got Trinity here. So, Kim, you are up first. Trinity, I'm going to ask you something to ask Sam, since you're also a senior. When you heard there, this was kind of a free year, what did you think about the possibility of next year? Or are you putting that off? What's um, in your head? For right now, I'm just... You Trinity, muted, you're, Trinity. You're muted. Okay, is that better? Good. Yep. Okay, um, right now I'm just focused on this season. Um, that's my main focus and I won't make a decision until the season's over. Go ahead, PJ. Hey, Trinity. Um, so, you know, when, when coach, when you decided to come to Arizona, you know, you had originally put out there that you wanted to stay closer to home. Really, what was it about Coach Adia and the program that made you say, this is where I feel at home. This is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, so originally when I decided that I wanted to be closer to home, I was considering um, being closer to family because I had some family um, issues going on. And um, I spoke, sat down with my family, talked to them. Um, and then COVID was a, a main part of me considering Arizona as well, because um, I got extra time with my family that I haven't had in years. And I, I was home for a, a while before I, um, before I decided to come to Arizona. And then when I met Coach Adia and we talked about um, my goals after this year, um, playing professional one day and just being a part of this team, it just felt right. 
you know, so um, I just went with my heart and my heart led me in the right direction. So that's what led me to um, come to Arizona. Great. And, um, you know, what's it like battling with Kate and Lauren every day in practice? <laughs> oh, it's super competitive. Every day is super competitive from every position, um, not just um, down in a post, but every position is super competitive. Kate, me and Kate going at it every day. <laughs> it's like either either she's on the floor or I'm on the floor every day. Like it's, it's my team, they know that we're, we're going to give it all we got in practice every day. So it's been really good going against Kate. And then Lauren, um, she's been a big addition to um, this team. She's been, her presence has been known and she's been blocking shots and just being a, a big presence down low. So I'm really glad to play with both of them. Go ahead, Ryan. How do you think your, your physicality will help this team? Ari was saying your team needs, or from, compared to last year, you guys need to be better on the boards and she thinks you can really help in that area. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's just what I bring just naturally since I started playing. Um, I originally started playing street ball first before I started playing organized ball. So that's just comes naturally in my game. And, and I've been able to just apply it to the team. Um, and they, they've embraced it. And my coaches, they want me to play physical. They, they just want me to just play really and be myself. So I think that's how I can add to this team being physical. Do you think the Pac-12 is, is maybe not used to that? And maybe you can kind of bring something that are, that to Arizona that other teams don't have? Um, I wouldn't say the Pac-12 isn't used to it um, because the Pac-12 has – a lot of height and I, I think they're really physical. The ACC was more, a lot of guards. I would say it wasn't really a lot of tall um, post players, but I think that I, I'm just gonna bring it to to my team and then we'll see how it goes from there, so. Go ahead, PJ. What do you see in this team that's different from teams you've played on in the past? Um. I would say leadership um, from the time I got here, um, the leadership from Sam, Kate and Ari, um, just from the beginning, they just hold everybody accountable, but they lead themselves first before they point out, you know, hold anybody else accountable. So the, the coaches doesn't have to look after the little things and police little things and, and get on us about just the small things. They get to focus on basketball and coach. So the leadership, has been the biggest thing that I just saw from the first day I got here. Go ahead, Alec. Yeah, Trinity, you t talked about how you grew up playing basketball and it was street ball before you started playing like on a team. What what kind of street ball was it like just with friends at a park? What what what, what was your definition of, of street ball? My definition of street ball is the outside courts. Um, a bunch of guys, even grown men sometimes, grown men sometimes, and, and me. I, I was the only girl, really, you know. There wasn't really a lot of girls that would get out there and play. And I just I just saw fun in it. Like, I just thought it was a challenge, and I just loved playing. It was I was just playing outside. You had to be tough, you know. But so, yeah, just playing outside on the court, um, just playing against older guys, stronger people. So, yeah. And what, what age did you start doing that? Um, I started playing when I was about seven, but I would say closer to 13, that's when I started playing with um, older people. Okay. And just yeah. that helped your physicality, you know, were, were you ever like, was there any like doubts? Like, did it make you, you know, playing against like older guys, you know, how, how would, was it uncomfortable for you? Did you like it? What would, you know, take me through that. Um, it was never uncomfortable for me. It was, I would say for them at first, it was uncomfortable. So from the, when I first stepped out there, they're like, oh, it's a girl, it's a girl. We're going to go soft. And then I'll hit them with one, one, like <laughs> one move and they'll feel how strong I am. And then they're like, oh no, we got to play. We got to play her like the rest of us. You know, we got to play her like everyone else. So I would say that was um, the biggest thing. Just them realizing like, I didn't want to be treated different. I wanted to be 
I wanted y'all to play me like I was one of y'all. So that's how, that was how it went. Thank you. Thank <laughs> no you. Problem. So Trinity, had you been out west before, and what's it like? What's the differences between back here and back home? Well, actually, no. This is my first time. When I moved out here in July, I wasn't able to take a visit because of COVID, but I'm loving it so far. I actually can really see myself living out here one day, you know, in the future. I love it here. The biggest difference is the heat, obviously. I mean, I'm from Florida, but it's very humid and the weather is up and down in Florida. We get rain, <laughs> we get a lot of rain, uh, storms, but we also get sunshine all the time as well. But here, I think I've been here for um, about four months, five months, and it's only rained twice. So that's the biggest difference. Go ahead, PJ. Yeah, do you think it's sort of your background of playing on the playing street ball, as you say, that's, that, that gives you that sort of innate sense that you have that you're a beast on when you rebound, you know, and when you and you go after balls like with abandon, does that come from that, or is that really just something in you? Um, I would say part of it could be my upbringing, um, being an underdog, um, just being undersized. Um, I'm about six foot, um, small, a smaller post player, so. I think just feeling like I always had to work harder than um, everyone else. I just, I instilled that in myself from a, a young kid. And I think my when I was growing up, I always had to work hard for everything that I, I've, I've gotten up until this day. So that's just how I approach the game. When I play, when I rebound, um, I'm watching from the time it leaves the shooter's hand, I'm watching it and I'm watching it the entire time. So I know how it's gonna come off and everything. So. I just um, try to stay one step ahead and just just work harder than everyone. And and as a follow up, um, you know, with rebounding, when you talk like that about that, and we've talked a little before about this, it reminds me of like a Dennis Rodman, right? He watched it and he knew the angles. Do you study it like that? I I have studied Dennis Rodman. Yes, watching him a lot. I watched The Last Dance um, uh, this summer and no, nobody did it better than him. So I think just trying to learn from him, watching him and I have more to my game than just rebounding, but rebounding is something that I really take pride in. So um, I think I just, I just try to get better every day. And I feel like when I step out on the floor, I think every rebound should be mine. So that's the way I'm, I approach it. All right, last one here, Ryan. Um, I'm sure one of the appeals of coming to Arizona was the the opportunity to play in front of a big crowd, but you guys might not have that chance, at least for the first half of the season. Um, I want to know what you think about that and then how you guys can kind of create your own energy out there. Um, I, am, I was really looking forward to playing in front of the fans. Yes, I was. Um, and I'm praying that one day we can still have fans, but I'm the type of player that I don't really need. Um, I don't really need to get energy from um, an external factor like I have it inside. So that's how, the way I've been approaching it every day in practice. It's exciting in practice. Every day is exciting. You know, playing alongside Aerie, she's the same way. She don't need she don't need um, a crowd. She don't need anything. So I think just feeding off of each other, we help we help each other, and we just we just play hard every day. So I'm hoping we can still have fans. I'm hoping one day. So I'm not, I'm not letting that go. We're still going to, I think we're still going to have fans. And also just because of the the pandemic, is there just kind of a sense of gratitude that you guys have that you just have a chance to play again? Uh, what was the question? What'd you say? Do you, do you guys have, is there also kind of a sense of gratitude that you guys have just the fact that you're able to play when I know during the pandemic, there was a chance that, you know, maybe no one would get to play. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Coach Adia has been very optimistic throughout the whole um, summer and with everything going on. Um, originally when they, they announced we were gonna play in January, um, I wasn't too happy about that, but 
um, just stayed positive. And then when they announced that we could play in November, um, I was ecstatic, really. So I just want to keep the same, keep the same attitude because nothing's, um, everything is un unpredictable. You never know. So um, I'm going to keep that same attitude. All right, that's it for Trinity. Trinity, I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for doing this. Okay, no problem. Thank you, guys. Trinity. Thank you. All right, last couple here will be Mara and Helena. Hey, Mara, Helena. Hey, um, so the only thing I ask is when you are not talking. Um, just to have your audio on mute, okay. but we will start right now. So anybody got any questions for Mar and Helena? We'll get going. PJ, go ahead. Great, thanks. Um, I, this first one, let's say for Mara. Um, well, it's been forever since we've seen both of you. It's nice to see you, first of all. Um, do you feel more comfortable with the system now that you're a sophomore? Hey, PJ, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> um, definitely, yeah, I mean, I came and I already knew what Coach Adia wanted from this team from me. So, um, yeah, I feel more comfortable. I feel like, a, um, like also as a point guard, I feel more comfortable and I can just like, it's more easy for me and I can help like other freshmen too. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, Mara, as I understand, you you have um, issues with um, asthma, and I just want to know your thoughts of, of playing in a pandemic. I know COVID is not for for people under twenty five; it's not like a, a serious disease. But when you do have a, a pre existing condition, it is. So I just want to know how you're kind of approaching this season, and maybe some of the extra precautions that you're taking. Um. Yeah. So I am in the risk group, but uh, I'm just being really precautious, like. I mean, all of us in the team, we're really precautious of everything. We're trying to follow all of the rules and stuff. So, I mean, just being careful and uh, doing, like, just not being around a lot of people and stuff. And just, I mean, we'll see. Uh, hopefully everything turns out for the best, but it is a bit scary, but we'll get through it. Did you, ha did you have any concerns, like, maybe when you were back in, in, in Latvia, that maybe you weren't going to come back for the season? Were you ever concerned about that? Um, No, I knew if, like, I mean, it was worrying that, no one really knew when the date's going to start or if even there was going to be a season. But once they said, yeah, like it's happening, I knew it was coming for sure. And then um, Helena, you're also, you're a, a diabetic. So I just want to know kind of the same thing. I mean, what kind of precautions are you taking this year to, to try to stay healthy? And then um, just if you had any concerns about um, playing I mean, this year during the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, I'm I'm trying to be like stay healthy, like trying to don't be around a lot of people, like control my numbers, and yeah, it's like the same thing, like Mara said. Did, did you have any? Con do you have any concerns about playing this season? Mm, no, really. I mean, yeah, the same thing. Go ahead, PJ. This is for Helena. Um, and uh, what's, so I have two questions. One is, um, Coach Adia has talked about the 1% and improving 1% every day. What, what is your 1%? What are you working on? Um, so definitely I'm working like always in my com communication, like for the language and all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's hard. I come from another country, another language. So, and this year I know more things. So I'm trying to help Marta, like the new freshman. So yeah, I'm trying to like be her mentor or yes, like Lucia did last year. So yeah, I think that's one of my improvements. That's great, that's great. And what do you see, um, I guess, first of all, what what should we see from you this year as your sophomore year jump? You know, how are you, how have you improved so far? Yes, yeah, so I think this year I'm like more comfortable on the court and outside the court. And yeah, I think 
I've been improving like, I know like how they works now. So I think like what idea one for me and for, for the team. So yeah, I'm trying to be better every day on that kind of things. So yeah. And what do you see out of Mara? I know that she's, everybody keeps talking about Mara um, and how much she's improved. Yeah, I think Mara improves a lot from last year. Like as a point guard, maybe last year she like didn't know a lot of stuff and play, but this year I think she's more comfortable. Like she's more aggressive, like, yeah. And she can do like a lot of things this year, I think so. anything else for Mara and Helena? Go ahead, Ryan. Um, Helena, did, how, did you know Marta before she joined the team? I know you're both, you guys are both from Spain. Yeah, I I know her. I've been playing with her like for two years. So what uh, what can Arizona fans expect from her? What kind of player is she? Oh, she's a like she's a big post. Like she's very strong. And yeah, like she's also she's really like intelligent on the court. So. Yeah, I mean, her, like, the worst thing is, like, she's very strong and she's a good post. And I know last year you had uh, Lucia, but what, what is it like having another Spaniard on, on, on your team? Yeah, I think having Marta this year is something, like, really special for me. So sometimes we can talk the same language, so that's, that feels maybe, like, more familiar. But, yeah, I think she can help us a lot. I mean, she is it's very hard for her. Like she don't like she doesn't know very well the language like me. So I know it's hard, but I'm trying to be like same like Lucia did last year for me. Do, do you have an example of some of the things that you help her with? Yeah, maybe on the go she doesn't understand one other size or something, and I knew from from last year, so I can tell her. Go ahead, PJ. So, you know, I've heard that there's a, definitely a different vibe in practice. Um, you guys are a lot more competitive. I know that from what I hear that you, especially you two are really pushing a lot of other players and, and it works that way. Everybody else is pushing everybody. What are you seeing and, and how hard is it in practice now? That's for both of you, either of you. Okay. Um, yes, practices definitely have been more competitive than last year, and uh, we all push each other. And, uh, you know, if you don't really work and compete, it's kind of hard for you because everyone's goes, everyone goes hard in all the drills, so you really need to be up. You, you know, you really have to get your game up. But, like, it's definitely better, and we make each other really – like, we make each other better better and – and also it makes practice kind of more fun, you know, when you're like, like the games we play are similar. It's not like maybe like last year, like, like we're still um, trying to figure out the matchup. So like any team can win anyone. Like it's, it's really interesting. And I think we, that helps us a lot. And I guess I'll ask this. Um, what do you two see out of, um, Lauren, she's a newbie. There's a lot sort of, you know, a lot of talk about her. Um, and, you know, she's battling against Kate and Trinity every day in practice and, and Samaje. Um, what does she look like to both of you? Um, yeah, I mean, for me, Lauren, at the beginning, like, I see one person. So now I can see, like, on practice, she's very competitive. She talks a lot. She's very communicating all the time. So I think she's really good and she can help us a lot. So yeah, I think I, re I really love her, yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. What stands out about Trinity as a player? Um, Definitely the fact that she goes hard in every practice. I mean, she goes hard against everyone. She, she's usually matched up against Kate, so they both go at each other all the time. And uh, she doesn't like losing. She's really, really competitive. So she's, she always picks up the team and tries to win and like she pushes everyone. 
and and she was telling us that uh, as a kid she played street ball against people that were a lot older. Uh, what can you also say about her physicality, and if that's something that maybe you guys didn't have the last the, or last year? Um, yeah, she's. She, I think she's probably one of the strongest players on the team. I mean, if I somehow switch on her, I mean, there's like no chance for me. <laughs> like she's really, really strong, and I think that helps for our other posts because when they go at each other, it helps when we're gonna play different teams and their posts. Go ahead, PJ. What do you think is, again, this is for both of you or either of you, what do you think is like the biggest change in Aerie so far? Mm, I mean, from Aerie, right? You say? Yeah, for Aerie. I mean, Aerie from last year, then this year, I mean, I think she's, like a really good player, all that stuff. So yeah, I think she's like a really good like consistency. Like she's always in the same mood. She's like always competitive. And now she's trying to be like, she's she's trying to push up like to the best team on the country. Like she 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 want to win this this year. So yeah, I mean, I think She's like changed to like better things, you know. It's... Do you see something in her game or her leadership that's really, it's a little bit different that we probably, you know, we haven't seen you yet and we'll see in that two weeks when you guys play. Um, is there is there a little something different from Ari that we're gonna see this? Um, I think just because last year we really didn't have the opportunity to show us ourselves and she didn't get to show her ab abilities in the tournament. She's like, you can see she's really, really hungry for this year. Like she's really motivated. So in practice, she goes hard on every drill and uh, like she, she asks from people, like she asks from different kind of people and she's not maybe the most vocal person uh, on the team, but she's kind of getting better at, at it and she's like talking more and uh, I think you'll like you'll see a really good area this year like it'll, it'll surprise you. She's even better. All right, does anybody have anything else? Go ahead, Rich. Uh, question with so many different players from so many different parts of the world. Uh, what's communication like Have you learned any foreign language other than English but picked up some Spanish uh, or, or some other European languages? Um, I'll, I maybe know like a couple of three, maybe Spanish words, but, uh, and uh, like we have some accents, like I, I live with Tara and she's from Australia. So I know that Australian accent, but uh, it's interesting having so many people from different places around the world just to learn different kind of cultures and see what it's like, learn what's it, what's it like in different places. So it's pretty interesting, but I think we handle the communication really well. Everyone knows, understands. Do you appreciate the, the different cultures that you're exposed to, uh, not only for so many foreign players coming in, but uh, being here in Tucson and then just kind of having that melting pot here at Arizona basketball? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's actually like good that there's a like a diverse culture and everyone's different. So like we all kind of blend in, like we all have our little unique something and that's like really interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, well, I think that's it for these two, unless someone has anything else, but uh, I'm, and we will see you guys later. Thank you. Thanks Adam. Thanks guys. Thanks, everybody.